early July here in 2022 and finally had some time to come and check out a few things that I've always wanted to come and check out in Jasper National Park, which weren't really high on the priority list as far as tourism goes, but definitely high on my list as far as curiosity goes. So this and behind me here is one of the little ponds. It's obviously a creek that's crossing over leading into the Athabasca River. This water comes from beyond the Palisades all the way to the far back. And I noticed that that little creek that comes around has a large marshy area that's filled with all of these like different colored lakes. They're not even lakes, they're like little ponds. Uh, they kind of look like ink pots, but these ones here, they're all different colors. So I wanted to come and check these out a little bit closer to kind of see what was causing these colors. This is a good example behind us here. Like this is kind of sand. So you're gonna get like this uh, nice, either clear or turquoise color. And even on the lake on the other side, you're gonna get like all of these different colors all in the same like part of the creek. But I think it's because it's a very marshy area and that's probably what's causing all these different colors. Like this is super unique. And it's something that even from the ground, you can't really tell. I even drove past here and missed it the first time. But then when I looked at the map, I'm like, oh, I had to turn around because it's not no very noticeable from the ground. So we're gonna go around and check out the path all the way to the river. And then we're gonna come back to check out the marshy area on the other side of the road and see if we can show you guys a closer look as to why these ink pots here are all these different colors here in Jasper National Park. Peace out. Here's one of the reasons why you can see this from high up. It's a clay or dirt, and it's even over there. You can see on the camera how it's a very, very distinct color change. And I'm not 100% sure this is sand. This is clay. Yeah, I can make something out of this. It's very, very sticky and dense. 100% clay. And even from a dried up spot here, you can tell big differences between just the dirt and the clay, where it just kind of gets a very different color from one side to the next. Because of the clay, it's super soft. If you step in it, you'll sink pretty easily. Some of the different colored circles actually brought to you by this bright green grass that's growing on the, on the outside. This one here, it seems to be growing right in the middle. I got right to the side of the Athabasca River. This is one of the closer big brown lakes. And the light brown here, this is all this clay. And everywhere where I'm standing on, uh, I can't really veer off too much where there's not a whole lot of vegetation. Because this, you will sink down on this stuff. It's just all marsh. Perfect for birds. Still an awesome view here of Hawk Mountain. We'll have to get up top of that mountain at one point. We've done Morro Peak, you can see from back there. From this side view, you can see different colors on the ground underwater. It's causing these like ripples. Gorgeous view nonetheless of this little area here. Awesome view right in front of the Palisades and the Desmet range that starts right in behind us here. Here's a better angle of how the clay 
gives it one color. And if there's rocks, it gives it a darkish color. So I'm gonna see if I can walk along the edge of the marsh to see if we can get a closer look at these colors, which all of the lakes with the funky colors are actually right in this area over here, which getting to there might be difficult without uh, getting waist deep here. The bottom of the lake slash pond is rock, but see the water is flowing through this little rib here. It's like a little tiny peninsula, which is obviously made mainly of clay. And you can see how the clay has kind of jetted out from the water and they made this uh, unique little uh, jetway out of the bottom. So it's like the clay is bleeding over top of the rock. The idea was good, but I was just introduced as to what the definition of a wetland is. This is exactly what this is. It looks all grassy and then there's bushes and these bushes are probably growing in really mild clumps of dirt here and there, but all of this stuff is just floating grass through a huge pool of water. So what's in behind me here? I tried to find several spots to get across, all the way down there and all the way this way. And I would have to probably go all the way to the forest and do this big loop around. And it would actually be easier to get to using like a paddle board or a canoe would be a paddle board would probably be the easiest way to get in there. I'll show you what it looks like down here. If you try to make a step down there, it looks like it's solid until you step until you realize you're sinking down and down and down. And then you have to basically step back. That's as close as we can get for today, but at least it answers my question as to why there's different colored lakes, which has a mixture of dirt and clay and rock, which makes different colored lakes along with the grass and the green trim along all these cool little ponds. So I guess we're going to head back down the road and off for another adventure. My name is Eric Chable, and these are my adventures. Peace out.